You got a problem, you don't know what to do. Your dreams are strange, and you see in things too. The world is full of mystery. Life's more than you can see. You can ask pomegranate. You can ask pomegranate. Jesus. This is Juliet, and I'm calling from Portland, Oregon. And I have a—I'm currently in magic school, and I'm curious to know more about dream work and how serious to take um, certain dreams that are direct, and what kind of magic to do around dreams. I can um, tell you about one I had just a few weeks ago, about a month ago. And that was, I was on a rabbit, actually, a small rabbit. It was silver, and I was riding the rabbit, and there was a man next to me on a silver rat, and we were riding together into a dark field, and then it opened up, and there were about 50 people looking at me, and it was light out, so I made some kind of transition point, and there was light out, and they are all staring at me, and they're all Native Americans, except a few Caucasians mixed in. And I walked through the line, and there was a man who said, um, well, your job is to be a shaman. And there was a woman next to him on his left. She had long hair, Native as well. And she started teaching me some things, which I don't remember. And he... Um, he was teaching me, and then he was teaching another student, and they did this strange thing where they were taking a plate with a basket on top and a candle, and as soon as the elder lit the candle for the other trainee, I turned around, and there was an alley. And the alley was pitch black, even though it was light out. And there was something in the alley that was kind of, um, well, it was really frightening, and I remember being very scared. And then um, there was something that shot an arrow towards my heart. And it, I kind of brushed it away just before it hit me. And then I woke up. And I was pretty shaken by the whole thing. So um, before that, I actually asked my dream. I'm like, okay, I need some clarification on my career. I just need to know a little bit of a direction. And so I'm kind of not sure how serious to take something like that or not. Juliet. Using your dreams for solving problems and asking questions and having adventures is a really great technique. And it does require developing a skill set and some language and some understanding in order to fully utilize the, your dreams. And they are very, very powerful. Um, more than one famous inventor, actually a friend of mine who invented the camera that um, does a 360 degree shot of the world, which now Google uses for um, street view. He invented the camera for that. And that he, I remember one time we were at a retreat and he came downstairs from sleeping and he said, I just had a dream resolving my problem with the key part of this camera. And it totally made the camera work where he would have been stuck. And he got that information through a dream. So anyway, back to your dream. Um, so that's an interesting dream. You asked a question before you went to sleep. People, good idea. Ask questions before you go to sleep. And then you will get these baffling answers from your dreams. And the reason they're baffling is because dreams utilize our abstract nature. Dreams utilize our the right side of our brains. They use, we dream in symbols. And there's all kinds of dreams. And I think as the podcasts go on, I'll can delve more into the different kinds of dreams and what they do and how to interpret them. But for your dream, you had a dream about um, what my career is. And you said you were in magic school. And so, and then you have dreams about First Nations people and you had dreams about shamans and you had dreams about shamans shooting arrows at you. So on first take, I'm like, well, <laughs> <laughs> it seems like you should be working in the mysterious realms and working on behalf of people to um, learn more about it. And you are doing that. So your dream is encouraging you to go forward. 
um, when you dream about animals and they're being helpful to you, you could always just say, well, okay, so, so the rabbit, I'm dry, I'm riding on a rabbit. One technique is to just simply go, what are rabbits? What are rabbits like? How, how do I experience rabbits in the world? And why don't dream books, dream interpretation books work? Because they are saying, well, the river symbolizes your bloodstream or the river symbolizes whatever they say. Um, a, cat, a black cat in dream means doom to come. Um, because they are saying one set of symbols. And in fact, your dream is highly individualized to your set of symbols and what your symbols are, are really particular to you. So a black cat in your dream is going to be something other than a black cat in my dream. And I have to figure out what my symbols are. And once you do, you can kind of stick to them and they'll recur. You know, those symbols will recur because one way our spirit guides talk to us is through our dreams. So they give us little images. Um, so a rabbit, what's a rabbit? You know, what, what, are, how do I experience rabbits? And that, that animal can then become a helper to you. The rabbit is a helper to you and it helps you understand your nature or it helps you understand how to get from where you are to where you'll be going. You were riding the rabbit. So it's about transportation. It's about transporting you from one place to another. So notice the obvious actions. You're being transported or the dreams where you're trying really hard to get somewhere and you can't or um, you're stuck and that's going to give you the action. If you encounter a person in your dream, like you had a shaman in the dark, right? Um, he's shooting an arrow at you. So what you can do is just describe what that person was like to your, just write it down. Just like, well, they were small, they were dark, they were energetic. They were, they were mean, they were hysterical. Say that. I don't know if that's what they were, but pretend they were just write those down. And then what you have to do, and here's the key. Remember, they're symbols. So what is a symbol? A symbol is a gateway. It holds the place for the truth that is behind it. So in order to get the truth, you have to let go of the symbol. So let go of the dream at this point and just read to yourself the list of characteristics and say, ask yourself the question, who in my life right now is small, dark, hysterical, mean, and, and sort of, I feel like aiming things at me. If that's the characteristics and then ask, and then don't think too hard, take the first answer. And the dream that, that shaman was that person in your life. Um, and then for, like you said, a, you had a candle and you had a plate. And so you can figure out what those things are symbolizing too with a technique. Oh, there's a woman who developed this technique. I'm going to look it up and find out who it is and let you know at the end of the podcast. Um, but the technique basically is you, what do you do? You, um, pretend that you are talking to somebody who is from a foreign land and somewhat simple minded and has not encountered the world that you live in. One play, one really easy way to do it is imagine you're talking to an alien from another planet. And what you do is you, you just take, well, there was a plate. So let's just, I'll do it for fun because I don't have the dream, but let's pretend it was my dream and I had a plate in it. So I have a plate and I forget about the dream and I don't worry about what was happening, what kind of plate it was in the dream. I just remember a plate. And I say, I try to describe to the alien from another planet what a plate is. And I say, a plate is a thing that I'm trying to get abstracted, right? A thing that is used by people. See, but people doesn't work because he doesn't know what people is. So beings like me who want to hold vital nutrition, but he doesn't know what nutrition is. So I have to say vital life force. So what in my life is a thing that holds vital life force? And so then I have to say, well, right now that's my body. So the plate symbolizes my body. So the plate is about my physical form, my body. And that's how it works, right? 
and I can do it. Even though it was my dream, I could still do it <laughs> because everything symbolizes something for someone. Now, if you, when you do it, it might symbolize something different. And so now I have your dream, which is about, you know, rabbits, which for me are about fun and joviality and hopping and getting places. I'm getting somewhere through fun and joviality and I'm getting places and I'm using my being handed my body. I'm being given the gift of my body and it's got a candle. So if I did a candle, it would be life force and it's filled with flame. It's filled with light. And that, that thing is being shot in the heart by this small, dark person who's, who's intense. And that's my friend, you know, Isabella, who is a magic, very powerful, magical person. And she's shooting me in the heart with an arrow. And what is an arrow? Well, let's pretend I came up with an arrow is a transformative thing that changes you. And there's my dream. I understand it now. It's about getting where I want to go, vital life force in my body and being transformed by a magical person who's teaching me something important. Okay. So that, if that helps you interpret, um, and what you can do is before you go to bed at night is you can drop a question in. You just like, right, as you're going to sleep, you just go, give me information about this. And when you wake up in the morning before you move, just try to remember your dream. And what's key is try to remember, because even after you move, you're going to forget. So you have to remember like, oh, I had a dream about an arrow and a rabbit and, a, and an arrow. And you go, arrow, rabbit, flame. Those three words, arrow, rabbit, flame. Not the whole thing, arrow, rabbit, flame. And they will open the dream back up for you later when you, you know, when you get up and go to the bathroom and wash your face and you go, arrow, rabbit, flame. It's like, what was the dream? What was the dream? Oh, yeah. It'll all unfold for you again. So that's a technique to use. And dreams are awesome. And they're a real beautiful gateway into the mysterious realms. Because after all, don't you find it interesting that we can stay here on the planet for tops 16 hours um, comfortably with that before we have to get off? We have to go. I'm out. Like our bodies just go, man, I'm out. I can't do it no more. I got to go. I got to go on a mystical journey. I've been on the planet Earth for too long. 16 hours is tops. And some of us can go for eight before we need a nap. And um, so, you know, that's why babies sleep so much. They're like, hi, I'm here. Oh, my God. Okay, got to go. So we leave the planet, you know, every day for a third of the day. We're out. We're out because there's only so much time we can spend here. It's really intense, <laughs> you know. Um, we're all on mystical journeys every night and you're all dreaming, whether you remember them or not. To leave a question for me, dial 520-222-9920. Five two zero two 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 ninety nine twenty two. Visit my website at askpomegranate dot com. You can ask pomegranate. She's a